Up until very recently, I hadn't owned a digital camera for almost three years. I made the switch to film after a period of creative burnout. Discovering and working with the older medium rejuvenated my excitement and curiosity for photography for a number of reasons. One of those was that it almost seemed as though digital cameras felt like they were lacking soul and character and were becoming even more utilitarian. That's how I felt up until a month ago when the Fuji X100F entered my life and I quickly fell in love. The X100V, Fuji's latest offering, only gets better even though its predecessor was already really good. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on the new X100 a day before I left on this trip to the American Southwest where I'm working on my portfolio of Route 66 and surrounding areas. And I figured I'd bring the camera to shoot alongside my Pentax 645N, just like I usually would with my X100F. I'm on my final day here in New Mexico before I head home and I've had the chance to shoot with this camera over the last couple days. And like I said, I was already really happy with my X100F, but Fuji has taken what was already a great camera and made it that much better. So let's talk about some of the updates. So for a brief overview, the major updates with the new X100 are an updated 23mm F2 lens that brings with it better wide open performance, an upgraded 26.1 megapixel sensor borrowed from the X-T3 with a new processor and better autofocus performance, 4K video capability with F-Log, new classic negative and Deterna film simulations, a two-way tilting screen and an upgraded EVF, and 100% weather sealing. So that's a pretty awesome list of updates. And like I said, I was already happy with my X100F, but Fuji really did go and add a lot of useful and impressive improvements to this camera. And we might as well start by talking about one of the big ones, and that is the updated lens. So one of the knocks on the X100 for a while now has been that the 23mm F2 lens isn't that sharp wide open. And it's been the same lens across all four versions of the camera up until this fifth one where Fuji decided they were gonna update the lens design. From my brief time spent with this camera, I can definitely say that the lens takes a big leap forward in terms of quality when shot wide open. I photographed a number of images at dusk using higher ISOs and shooting wide open, and I was incredibly impressed with how well the lens resolved detail. This will be a welcomed upgrade for many X100 users, especially if you like to shoot with this camera's max aperture. Fuji's also updated the sensor, now using the 26.1 megapixel version from the X-T3, and they've added a new processor and they're claiming better autofocus performance. Now, obviously the subjects that I'm shooting aren't fast moving, but I was impressed with the camera's ability to nail focus in low light and dusk situations. As for image quality from the new sensor, I love the look this camera produces, just like I love the look from the X100F. The best way I can describe it is that it feels like the images have a soul. They have a certain look and character that just feels authentic. I've never shot with a camera before where the images excite me this much. And Fuji's built-in film simulations only take that uniqueness a step further, giving us the option to bake in a look when shooting JPEGs or to apply it later in Lightroom with RAW files. The X100V adds two more film simulations, Classic Negative and Eterna, both beautiful in their own right. When it comes to the body and design, Fuji's made a few upgrades. One of the biggest ones being the addition of a two-way tilting screen, which will be a welcomed addition, I'm sure, to many people who shoot street photography, as it'll make shooting from the hip quite a bit easier. They also went ahead and weather sealed the camera completely, although it's only 90%. There is a little bit of a catch. 
So Fuji claims 100%, but you have to use the additional screw-on protective lens filter to get from 90% to 100%. And apparently the reason for doing this is that they wanted to keep the lens design nice and compact so they didn't build in weather sealing. They added it into this protective filter. So the camera still uses the same W126S battery, but Fuji has improved battery life up from 270 on the X100F when using the EVF to 350 on the X100V. And speaking of the EVF, Fuji has also upgraded it on this camera. They're now using the same one from the X-Pro3, which is the 3.69 million dot OLED. And it's also brighter and has a refresh rate of 100 frames per second. And that brings me to the last big update on this camera. And that is the ability to shoot 4K video internally, which is quite a step up from the previous versions where they maxed out at 1080 at 60 frames per second. The X100V is now capable of shooting 4K DCI up to 30 frames per second internally at 200 megabits a second. It can also shoot HD 120, and Fuji has also added their F-Log profile into this camera. Again, I don't think anyone's buying this camera purely for video use, but the updates are pretty nice, especially Fuji's addition of their F-Log profile, and you can record 10-bit 422 out of the HDMI on this camera. That being said, while it is nice that they bumped up the specs on this camera, and you now can shoot pretty nice looking 4K DCI video internally. The lack of in-body stabilization makes it almost impossible to handhold this camera without experiencing a bunch of micro jitters in the footage. Overall, the fifth version of the X100 is an impressive and very capable addition to the lineup. And even though I was already really satisfied with my X100F, it's nothing wrong with taking a camera that's already really, really good and making it that much better. And that's what brings me back to why I love what Fujifilm's doing as a company. Even though I've only owned the X100 for a short period of time, it's a camera that definitely has character. From the classic analog rangefinder styling to the impressive film simulation modes, Fuji has built a camera that encourages creativity, both technically and aesthetically. The images that I've shot using these cameras excite me in a way that no other digital camera has in the past. And I'd be lying if I said that I didn't if even just for a second, think twice about waving goodbye to film. So regardless of what you shoot, DSLR, mirrorless, film, this would be a welcomed addition to anyone's kit. It's an incredibly compact camera that'll fit in your pocket and produces beautiful results. And depending on the type of tarf you do, it may actually be the only camera you need to own.